All right, welcome everyone to the session of Human Eye versus AI. Um, and for those of you who are tuning in, I am Eugene Barahovich. I'm co-founder and CEO of Your Coach Health. And today uh, I'm pleased to say that I uh, have three amazing people joining us on this panel. Um, I actually will say that we probably will all agree that it's not about Human Eye versus AI. So before I kind of let each of you guys introduce yourself quickly and what you do, um, I just wanted to put that on record, uh, that while I think we're all believers in AI and uh, the humans that are helping, you know, in front of it, as, as coaches especially, um, I, please, uh, Patrick, maybe we'll start with you for a quick intro of who you are and Span Health. Yeah, so I am Patrick. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Span. Um, I've been playing tennis my whole life, and that's what led me to my own personal journey of uh, health optimization and longevity. And um, that's what we're doing with Span today. It's uh, essentially a longevity coaching platform that leverages all the kind of data that you're collecting from consumer labs like 23andMe or blood tests that you can take at home and wearable devices like your Apple Watch and, and such devices. Excellent. Let's move on. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on to Dr. Sahana Gopal from Wild AI. Uh, hi there, nice to be here. Um, so I am actually head of product at Wild AI. Uh, Wild uh, AI is essentially trying to help women make better decisions for their health and fitness. Uh, so what we do is that we collect a lot of uh, information around uh, menstrual cycles, birth, birth control, menopause, perimenopause, and then we help women uh, make better decisions around nutrition, around their training, around their recovery, uh, to just elevate their capabilities um, in general in a health and fitness setting. Excellent. And uh, let's move to you, Jamila. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Eugene, and to the other panelists. So my name is Jamila Hoy Rosas. I'm the Vice President of Clinical Operations at OneDrop. Uh, OneDrop is a precision health company. We try to combine the power of AI with a human touch um, of on-demand telehealth. And uh, by training, I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator. Um, I oversee our on-demand telehealth function and our interdisciplinary team of health coaches. So I'm excited to hear from the fellow panelists today and share how OneDrop, um, our members and our coaches benefit from AI and our predictive analytics. Amazing. And, you know, maybe we'll just dive right in. Um, and, and I do think that we're all going to probably answer the same way, but I'll poke a little bit. Um, AI and health coaching, right? Friend or foe? Uh, so maybe we can kind of start with that um, and would love to hear your opinions, uh, but also kind of how each of you leveraging health coaches uh, and the technology. Um, and before we dive into that, I want to just point out one other thing that it's interesting that we're, you know, we've gathered all of you guys as panelists with health from longevity to optimizing, uh, you know, women's health and their nutrition and fitness to also chronic disease management reversal um, as well. And so the aspect of coaching across the board from the worried well to chronic disease management and the aspect of artificial intelligence, but also all of the data we're collecting are present along the journey of all of us as human beings. So now, human eye versus AI, friend or foe for coaching. Uh, maybe we'll start with Jamila. Um, yeah, Eugene, friend, friend. <laughs> so <laughs> AI and coaching should be friends. Um, at OneDrop, we try to enhance the product experience for our members and supplement that with coaching. So, you know, rather than replacing our human health coaches, we use AI to um, better the experience that people are having and complement the experience that they're having with the on-demand telehealth. So, um, for instance, our members can track all of their relevant health data. So in one place, they can look at their glucose, their blood pressure, their weight, their physical activity, medications, heart rate, all of those things in one place. Um, and then we gather that data um, also passively from any wearables you might have, your smartwatch, um, any of the uh, syncing apps that you might have that have your food data. And all of that kind of um, connects with what we're doing at OneDrop. And then we take all of that data, over 31 billion data points at this, um, at this juncture, and we use that to power our AI so that we can make predictive analytics, we can um, give people forecasts, trends about where their health is going, and then we share all of that information in real time with the coaches so that the coaches, when they're interacting with, our, um, with their members, 
they're able to give them um, good insight, they're able to give them appropriate guidance, and they're able to do their work at their highest capacity. So AI and coaching, definitely friends working together to make the member experience better. And, and before we go on to uh, uh, Sahana, maybe just a, a little bit of a deeper question. So obviously, um, you you have amazing coaches on, you know, as part of your team, um, as they're doing the daily work with the patients and health consumers, um, how much are they augmented by the technology, these coaches, um, uh, versus the intuition, the motivational interviewing, the, you know, the, the, the things that our coaches excel at. Um, so maybe just uh, for our listeners and viewer, viewers, both coaches and consumers and others that are listening in. Yeah, absolutely. So you're right. The coaches are awesome. Uh, they are offering a really personalized care experience to every member and that they're drawing on their intuition. They're drawing on their professional expertise, um, utilizing um, motivational interviewing and other behavioral health strategies. Um, but we're also utilizing that in conjunction with all of the data that we're getting from the app. So every single piece of information that a member might enter, that is um, available immediately to their coach. And we're able to track blood pressure trends, what's happening with their glucose, um, make the connection for them sometimes between um, their physical activity, what they've eaten, and how that's impacting blood pressure or blood glucose. So um, the data is helping to enhance the coaching experience, but the coaches themselves are still bringing that human touch as certified health Health professionals, nurses, dietitians, diabetes educators um, who have the appropriate clinical and behavioral health qualifications um, to be able to use that information appropriately and then give the member that data back to them. You know, what does this mean? How, um, if your blood pressures have been, you know, high or out of target for a bit, what are some of the things that might be contributing to that? And then really helping people to become detective of their own health um, and be able to make those changes based on the information that they've received. Thank you. Um, let's let's go with the same question. You know, friend or foe, uh, Sahana. Huh, it's a really good question for me. So um, I uh, actually have a second job, which is a strength and conditioning uh, coach. So I work with British Diving, um, so with the Olympic team. Oh. And um, yeah, for me, it was uh, bringing in an app like Wild, which is uh, essentially trying to solve a problem and be a coach in itself um, by delivering data insights uh, to the athlete or the woman who's using it. Uh, for me, it was kind of like, oh, like how, how, how do I think of this as, as, a, as, an, as a coach, like an like a actual strength coach? Um, but I think we then kind of went down this route where we actually started up a coach platform uh, through Wild and um, that allows now the athlete to connect up to their coaches uh, and their coaching team. So whether that's a nutritionist, physiotherapist, uh, technical coach, whoever it is, whatever sport they play, um, or a personal trainer even, uh, we're able to now deliver uh, insights in terms of uh, menstrual health and uh, you know what birth control people are on, what that means for them in terms of their performance and how they actually respond to that kind of treatment. Um, and, and then we, we kind of like, um, kind of started this conversation uh, for coaches and athletes. So we, we are now actually facilitating a lot of that conversation to happen through the data that we provide through Wild. Uh, so for me as a coach, actually it's, it's an assistive tool. And the way I look at it is it is an assistive tool where I can actually make uh, and help discuss things with my athletes uh, and you know, kind of like look at trends together, which which kind of like makes uh, menstrual tracking uh, a part of performance uh, for the athlete as well, and they start to see it like that. Um, and I think for male coaches specifically, uh, it becomes uh, much easier to start the conversation when you put it in in the sense of a, a performance metric like nutrition or sleep or uh, recovery or whatever else. So so yeah, I think um, in terms of how the data is is kind of shown and the, the ability to kind of uh, discuss that together it really, really kind of helps enforce a relationship. And it's not an AI versus uh, coach, but it's more of a, an assistive tool, uh, kind of like in your toolbox uh, to start using it and then and kind of progress that relationship with, with your athlete. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Patrick, um... Are you, maybe you're going to say something different in the sense that it's, it's a foe, but I, 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 I doubt it. So let's, uh, let's hear you and, and the aspects of uh, AI and health coaches and longevity, which I, I'd, I'd love to hear what that actually means. 
Yeah, I mean, and no surprise, I'm going to say Fran. Um, I think uh, one other thing that, that's common in what you both said and that it would resonate with uh, very much is the complexity and uh, the amount of qualitative feedback that a human can ingest today and the way they can integrate that into their coaching and the ability to provide accountability, provide the good recommendations that are going to work for that person and are very personalized. That is not something that my Alexa or Siri can do today. Do I believe that in 50 or 100 years, we will be able to ingest that amount of variables and to even collect that data? Maybe, but that's definitely not where we are today. And so I think that's the reason why we can't replace the human at all. And it's really a combination of you know, 20% of technology, really providing the support for the coach to be augmented and to provide even better coaching that, uh, that we're looking at. And so it's exactly the same approach that we're taking with SPAN. The goal is obviously to provide diet, sleep, exercise recommendations. And so ingesting data from my URI, my Apple Watch, my continuous glucose monitor, and all these devices is super important to be able to make these decisions and uh, providing as much insights as possible on the data to the coaches so they don't have to literally read the charts and calculate the trends and calculate some of the other metrics on top of these, like the variability of uh, some data points and some metrics. All of these things, I guess, you have to, uh, to do automatically so they can save that time and, and be more efficient. So part of it is not even AI, it's really just uh, analytics and basic uh, data science. And part of it is going to become more and more AI as we have a bigger data set, but I would say that we're not even very much there in the sense that we, we can predict some things, but it's fairly simple. And uh, as we grow our data set, we'll definitely be able to, to call this with AI and machine learning. You know, it, you, you bring up actually a good point, right? I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of make a joke that human eye and AI rhymed, but I think when we're talking about, you know, um, specifically, in, you know, for, for our audience, right? Um, you know, the self-learning of algorithms, I think we're talking much more broadly, actually, from everything from the data collection to data science and analysis to cues. Um, so again, I'll, I'll make a little bit of a joke that it just rhymed really well. And I know it's a hot topic. And I think, you know, we get a lot of inbound questions from coaches, actually, to a certain extent, well, is, you know, is AI going to replace us, right? And actually be curious, in a sense, to hear how you guys approaching, even from talent, you know, uh, you know, recruitment of coaches, because um, as technology companies, yes, it's health company, but also driven by technology. I'm curious if you get asked those questions and how do you even convince uh, or what are your comments back to the talent that you're working with on AI and the question of will AI replace me as a coach? And maybe uh, Dr. Sahana, let's start with yourself. Well, uh, I think when you establish relationships with with athletes, um, I think you know they. Uh, I think both sides need to be educated in terms of what that data actually means as well. So, I feel like um, unless the person that you are delivering sessions to or you're interacting with on a day to day basis actually understands that the AI is all they need, um, then then sure, like an AI person would uh, replace me as, as a coach kind of getting them to hit the right intensity in the gym, for example, um, or trying to kind of assess like uh, kind of movement patterning and exactly what, what positions they should be in that's optimal for them. Um, I think it is going to be a long while away um, and the posture or the percentage of how much I use AI would potentially increase over time. Uh, but as long as I'm, I am secure in my relationship with the athletes, like I can build those relationships, um, I would always place it in a, again, like I say, a toolbox uh, and then and then proceed from that from that direction. So it's, it's a very good point. Right. Um, I think uh, a key component to health coaches uh, is a relationship driven profession. Right. Um, it is about getting to know you, your behaviors you know, your insights, you as an individual. Um, and while, you know, there are probably sort of uh, some, uh, I've actually was listening, oh, this was a while back on, uh, on Clubhouse, there was an AI, um, uh, AI woman uh, that apparently the developers of that AI woman 
got threats because they changed the voice or some look from you know, people they were communicating with this person. So they there are established relationships with this uh, you know AI bot, which is kind of crazy. But you know, yeah. let, let's go back to um, uh, maybe uh, uh, Jamila. Let's jump to you. I know uh, you guys have been also hiring coaches, um, and and curious if that came up right uh, as far as some of those discussions with uh, onboarding talent uh, around the use of the technology to augment them and to help them uh, scale. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a reasonable concern. Uh, we have seen automation replace some human jobs, but I think with coaching in particular, there's really no substitution for what we just described, that relationship, the rapport building, um, that human connection in healthcare to make people feel like they've got a human advocate who's on their side, who's working for them and, and helping them to understand how to better care for themselves. Um, you know, I, I want to clarify, like at OneDrop, we don't feel like we're offering AI-based coaching. We really recognize the value of having humans in those roles and delivering that coaching via these digital tools that make it more more impactful, make it so that we can reach more people. And then we use the AI to supplement that care, right? So um, in the example that I gave earlier with our predictive insights, um, we want to make sure that um, people are getting that uh, that one-on-one -on -one connection with someone. You know, uh, once you have a coach at one drop, that's your coach for the entirety of your experience. You can develop that relationship. You understand each other's concerns. Um, uh, coaches become very familiar with all aspects of the person and their their family life and all of the things that might be um, making it easy or more difficult for them to you know uh, maintain their health behaviors and achieve their goals. So you know. Humans just have uh, an irreplaceable role, I think, in our coaching experience. As we mentioned earlier, they're, they're, they've got their intuition, the emotional intelligence, um, empathy, uh, and also just the cultural competence considerations as well, right? So um, it's very hard to teach AI how to relate to um, all of the different ways in which people might be different. And, um, and coaches can do that. We can do that on a human scale. We can train that, we can teach that, we can learn that over time. And that I think is one of the most difficult things for um, AI to replace is that cultural um, competence lens. Yeah, you know, we're at your coach, if you look actually even at our logo, it's the Hito symbol, which is a Japanese symbol for human. So the whole point of this is we all need a human being to lean on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of at the core of our philosophy. Uh, Patrick, same. I know uh, you're you're a young company and growing, but any any discussions uh, that you have had with health coaches uh, around this topic? Kind of. No, I mean that's that's never been a problem really. But what I would say is, uh, I guess every brand, every company, and every person will need a different coach almost, and so the diversity of what a good and great coach means. Is probably as diverse as the population that the company is trying to serve and in our case i think we're trying to find incredibly curious coaches so that's typically the, the profile that we have on the team people who are not afraid to work with uh, data from sleep wearables from an apple watch and trying to think how can i really look at the long-term progress of that person in terms of their heart rate their heart rate variability their glucose levels their sleep metrics um and so I guess that requires a certain mindset. And so that's the, the part that's maybe a little bit difficult about the job and then finding them. Um, but the coaches that we have today are incredible and, and really good at that job, which is very specific to what we do. And uh, even the target segment that we're going after today, but maybe will not be the same targets. And, and you know, you brought up uh, the kind of the individuals that you look for to join the team. Again, as a young startup, Patrick, right? And I know, uh, Sahana, I know one drop is a bit, uh, you know, been around uh, longer. Uh, you know, what do you guys, uh, I mean, from a skills perspective, right? Because again, there's a lot of health and wellness coaches tuning into this. Um, from a skills perspective, um, obviously the core health coaching skills and experience. But I think, you know, uh, we get a lot of questions of, from coaches, you know, how do we use a lot of these technologies and tools, right? Um, how do we advance our own knowledge around it? So maybe stick a little bit on the talent side. What do you, what do you guys individually look for? Uh, you know, Patrick already kind of went into that. Um, when you when you are looking to bring on talent from an experience with some of these technology technological tools, and I see Jamila, you unmuted yourself, so you, you're you're it. You'll go first. I'm just preparing myself, Eugene, just in case. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But I think, uh, you know, Patrick's comment about intellectual curiosity is so important. Um, you know, we really are looking for people who who display that in their um, in their interview process. The cultural competence that I mentioned earlier are also critical, not necessarily having worked with every sort of person that you might have, um, you know, that you could have possibly worked with, but having that curiosity about cultures, having a curiosity about learning more, um, wanting to increase your cultural awareness, being the sort of person who might travel or try new foods, you know, just kind of being open to the variety of human experience, I think makes um, for a great coach. And as we, you know, I mentioned earlier, empathy, right? You know, we, we noted AI can't mimic empathy, right? Um, at the core of all of that is the ability to develop trust with someone, to be able to listen to them, to express genuine understanding. Um, so we need people who kind of are able to display those skills, I think, in the interview process as well. Um, and the emotional intelligence, as, as I mentioned earlier, there's there's a lot of emotions around um, coping with a chronic illness and how, you know, how are you going to be able to manage all, the whole uh, time and energy burden of living with a chronic illness, and especially if you're a full-time worker or, you know, so all of these different things, people need um they need people who can respond to them with empathy, who can uh, understand the emotions around chronic disease self-management and be able to you know, respond appropriately to their frustrations, their excitement, their fear, whatever it might be. So you know, we look for those, those key qualities in, in our applicants for these sorts of roles. Sahana, thank you very much, Camila. Makes sense. Yeah, I think for us, it's a little bit different because we are yeah. uh, the AI platform, right? So we are actually building going towards AI uh, as we collect more data from women. Uh, but I think our, um, our ask when we, when we look at our coaching platform, um, I, I feel like it's, it's coaches who want to learn and it's coaches who want to educate themselves around uh, female physiology and how you know, they see women uh, as, not as small men and as we say a lot in the company um, and, and actually have an interest and a scientific interest and a uh, kind of a, an ability to learn and, and want to learn about um, how to apply uh, different types of recommendations when they need them most. So I feel like because uh, the women in the app are obviously looking for uh, something to help them, uh, I feel like if the coaches get on board with that, uh, then that could be a really, really constructive relationship. And that's what we try to provide uh, through the app. So we pr provide a lot of education around uh, what being in a certain physiological state for a woman means, uh, whether that's a perimenopause, for example, so wh why those symptoms actually arise uh, and what we can do about them in terms of exercise, in terms of food, uh, in terms of nutrition as well. So um, yeah, I think, I think it, it actually just attracts a, a certain type of curiosity uh, in a coach uh, when they're looking to kind of help their athletes with their, with their journey. And maybe, um, and I know you guys are kind of looking and growing your own teams, but you know, where, where do coaches even get started in learning, right? And, and you know, you, you pointed out, Patrick, uh, when you were talking about SPAN, you know, you're consolidating everything from DNA, 23andMe data, et cetera. I mean, how, I, I guess part of it is absolutely that, uh, you know, people are learning uh, on the job and, and some of the tools that the companies are building are also helping with this. Um, and so maybe any hints where, where people can actually, or health and wellness coaches can start learning around a, a lot of these technologies, AI, do we have room for more education uh, within these programs that are launched there, right? I mean, obviously a lot of it is focused on everything from motivational techniques to just behavioral uh, change uh, agents, but any, any thoughts or, or kind of, is there room for more education and how and where? aside from this conference, of course. Who wants to go first? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll jump to Patrick while I see your connection is somewhat stable. Um, I, I would say definitely the answer is yes. Um, I think specifically there's such a diversity of uh, technology brands and, and types of coaching that are required that I think we need more certifications or, or sub-specialization almost for different coaches. And so that's one of the things that we are looking at ourselves. We are looking at potentially building a, a training program that would uh, specifically be adapted for the kind of uh, data and tools that we work with. Obviously, you don't have to be able to learn um, 
how to read DNA to be able to practice on span, but that's one of the things that you have to be able to rely on through the tools of Cooper Valley. And so you have to have some curiosity about this and a really good way to find coaches and to be able to also make sure that more people know about these things and that the ability of uh, coaches to use these things is by uh, educating them. So that's one of the things we're looking at, but I would say the way our coaches have done it so far is mainly themselves, uh, self-learning, reading scientific publications, um, speaking to other professionals in the industry uh, who maybe are a medical doctor, a nutritionist, a dietitian, and learning from them. And the last one is definitely podcasts. Uh, probably actually the most important one, but uh, all of our coaches listen to a lot of podcasts from uh, medical doctors and nutritionists and dietitians, um, and they learn a lot from them. I, I love those podcasts on a run or a walk for sure. Sahana, any any hints for the coaches? Um, yeah, this is something we've we've discussed uh, quite at length. Um, I think just because the awareness is just about kicking off, about female athletes are starting to speak up. Um, you know, even women going to the Olympics are starting to speak up about you know uh, their experiences and their their challenges. So I think um, there is definitely uh, a need for coach education um, and just getting everyone on the same page about uh, what things actually mean for the athlete. So not necessarily like going into really big details about um, you know, biochemical changes and, and things like that, but it's more on a broader scale, uh, essentially how to tweak certain things that can add to performance. So say if your athlete is suffering from menstrual cramps, um, how do we get about preventing that um, on a recurring basis, like can we actually reduce the onset of those cramps uh, of PMS or, uh, you know, symptoms that you start to experience at perimenopause? Are there any nutritional changes that you could consider um, and trying to develop uh, kind of uh, a coach training uh, of, of sorts, uh, specifically for uh, uh, females who exercise and, and train? Thank you very much. Jamila? Yeah, uh, similar to what Patrick mentioned, you know, we we have been uh, we're working on building out a, a very kind of comprehensive training program. Right now, we've got a, a very intensive onboarding process where we teach our coaches the technology that we use at OneDrop, both our um, our internal tools and also how to look at all of the data that they're going to be getting from their uh, members. Um, you know, like I mentioned, there's a wealth of data, right? So we're looking at glucose data, blood pressure data, food data, physical activity data. How do we integrate all of that and kind of make sense of it um, for our members and in and, and our conversations that we're having with them? So we do a lot of onboarding there, but we're also looking to create a, a comprehensive um, training program that we could um you know, offer throughout the year uh, to any new hires. We also um, really want people to draw upon their own uh, credential training. So we've got nurses, we've got dietitians, they are working together as an interdisciplinary team. So if there's someone who has a question about a more complex case, they can talk to a colleague. They've got a lot of kind of professional expertise amongst them, years and years, decades and decades of professional expertise. So they, they can bring that to bear um, and, and uh, do case conferencing together and learn from each other that way. We also just commit to weekly, monthly training and meetings to go over topics of interest. So um, I think, you know, you definitely have to have a great onboarding program in place. You have to be thinking about your long-term strategy for um, onboarding and training new coaches and also keeping your current coaches up to date and helping them to communicate with each other and strategize together around, um, uh, you know, how to keep up their professional skills and how to stay on top of a very rapidly expanding evidence base. Even all of the information that's available about coaching, I, I, I have like a little coaching alert thing <laughs> on my uh, computer. There's like 10 new articles, you know, every day. <laughs> so uh, just staying yep. on top of the evidence base for coaching is, is a, it's a little bit of a full-time job right there. You know, you, you actually brought up a, <clears throat> a very good uh, word, evidence, right? Because uh, I've, you know, people that know me, I've always been saying in the past kind of health and wellness coaching has been considered cuckoo voodoo science. Um, but there's been a lot of evidence coming through clinical trials with and without health coaching and the benefits of it. You know, and I think um, a key component to that is actually a lot of the tools that the coaches are starting to use, right? Um and adding on, um, you know, some elements of, you know, smart 
smart algorithms. I don't want to necessarily call them AI. Maybe we can dive into kind of like just one quick um, 30 to 60 seconds. Like what does a day in coach's life look like, right? With kind of bombarded with tools already to a certain extent. And now there's more data. Maybe just, again, that relationship on the daily basis of, of a coach and that technology and data. Uh, if you can talk a little bit about that and we'll start with you, Jamila. Yeah, so, you know, our coaches are so fortunate. We've got this amazing uh, internal tool we call Springboard and it, um, you know, they're able to see in real time, all of their members, what's going on with them. If they've logged a new uh, blood pressure, blood sugar, um, any sort of data point, they're able to see all of that in their, um, in this internal tool. They're able to communicate with the, um, every member right um, within the tool. They're also able to, um, look at forecasts and predictions and things like that, that um, may have been presented to members. So there we are um, giving information back to members about their data while also showing that information to the coaches so that they can have a productive um, exchange about that information, right? And, and the coaches can help people to understand and make sense of those um, data points. So, you know, they kind of, they start their day by opening up this tool. It shows them all of their members. They're prioritized in different ways. They can see, you know, people who've sent them uh, recent messages. Those people go to the top. They can also see folks who, um, uh, let's say may have had a blood pressure that was out of target, those people will be flagged. So there are lots of tools within the tool that allow for the coaches to prioritize their time, know who they should spend the most time with and who to outreach to first. Um, so they kind of spend their day going through their list of priorities um, that, that have been uh, configured inside of our internal tool. Excellent. Patrick, let's jump to you. Um, you know, I can't even imagine what a day in a uh, health coach for longevity looks like, right? I mean, uh, everybody wants to live longer, right? So that's a lot of pressure on, on these health coaches. Yeah, and I think the, the answer and the, the motto for our members and our coaches is just take it one step at a time. Um, and actually that one step at a time is uh, we look at the interventions in the science and uh, we break these down into small experiments. There, there are one or two week uh, changes that people can make very easily, step by step, to make progress in the long term. So our platform sounds very much like uh, the one that Jamila uh, uh, described. You can see all your members. You can uh, identify who to check in with next based on a set of criteria and predictive markers. And one of the things that uh, you know we talked about evidence just before, we're actually baking um, our algorithm just based on the data um, and we're baking evidence into that. So essentially we're, we're seeing some thresholds that match specific studies that we've um, added to our database in the past. Uh, our coaches are able to see in context of that member all the scientific uh, papers that are relevant for that individual and they might start browsing, start doing some research and interact with our research team to decide what to do next. Uh, but actually more and more we're baking into uh, the different steps and those recommendations and the interventions in this science with the statistics of how those experiments have performed in the past for span members. And so that's giving indication to the coaches in terms of increasing someone's deep sleep, for example, making sure that the overall sleep is improving over time, that this experiment might have worked on the majority of our users in the past. And so that's a good first step maybe for someone who's just joining. In the future, we want to you know, obviously move to the next step, which is uh, contextualizing this uh, recommendation, making sure we can make it based on the individual and all the variables we have on them, so that maybe you join tomorrow and I'm joining tomorrow, but actually if we both want to improve our deep sleep, we would recommend different interventions based on those uh, variables in this context. Cool. Sahana, since you mentioned earlier that you guys are kind of more AI first and, and the leveraging technology, what does a day in a you know trainer coach look like at Wild AI? Um, yeah, so I think with our uh, coach platform, what, what we try to do is essentially alert the coach with anything that's happening with the athlete. So uh, coaches get alerts on, um, you know, athletes log the period. If the period is late, that's, that's, a, that's a big one, just because we know that a, a regular cycle is a sign of good health. So we want to be able to make sure that uh, the, the coaches are alerted on those uh, situations. Um, we also kind of provide uh, kind of alerts in the sense that we tell the, tell the coaches when athletes are experiencing certain 
symptoms for a long period of time or uh, really severe symptoms as well. And that essentially sets up um, a kind of conversation between coach and athlete. So uh, allowing them to discuss uh, a part of the problem that they had never really discussed before. And that, that's really kind of where we fit in. We're trying to kind of get an overall picture without missing the physiology piece uh, of the puzzle um, uh, for uh, females who, who train. Excellent. So in the time that we have left, I have one more very, very important question. I'd love to hear each one of you guys how this relationship of health and wellness coaches with technology and, you know, even deeper AI will be transformed in the next, let's say, five years. I'm picking a random time frame. Any, any specific thoughts how, you know, wh where's that balance going to lie from each of one of you guys' perspectives? And uh, maybe let's start with Sahana since you just finished off. Yeah, um, great question. I think um, we'd be able to use those insights uh, alongside a much broader scale. Uh, so what I'm hoping is that as we collect more data um, and the field of female physiology, I'm not sure you're aware, is really messy at the moment. Um, you have a lot of intra-individual variation, you have inter-individual variation, and you know, just kind of dissecting what actually happens across a menstrual cycle and where performance is the best and how you kind of should you periodize perform uh, training according to your, your menstrual cycle or not. All these are really big questions and they're hotly debated at the moment just because the research isn't quite there yet. Uh, but we, what we do know that the more data points we do collect, uh, and we are uh, attempting to build the largest uh, database in, in uh, female exercise physiology, um, we, we do hope that we can start to provide that information um, to similar sets of people, whether that's ethnicity, whether that's age group, whether that's uh, training level. Uh, and then we, we see that kind of application of the recommendation, uh, being able to help the coach uh, make a better decision uh, with the athlete. Uh, and that's really where I see it going. I don't see it kind of taking over uh, an individual's kind of coach, but I see it as, a, as another uh, point of conversation that kind of stimulates um, uh, kind of yeah. a, a way forward, really. And I see Jamila is shaking her head. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious on, on your futuristic thoughts here. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. I don't think... Um... I don't think AI is going to take over, so to speak. I think we're just going to be able to work better together. Um, you know, we are trying to, you know, make sure that our coaches, our data, everything is integrated. And so, um, you know, we're also doing a lot of research, trying to look at the effectiveness of these programs and uh, how we're doing our work with all of our different populations that we might be serving, whether they are underserved, whether they are um, uh, low income, uh, all sorts of different demographics. So I think AI is also going to help teach us a lot there about what are the best ways to work with different populations, what are the best ways to work with um, you know, different cultures, different uh, people with different ability levels. Um, I, I think there's a lot of learning that we're going to get over the next few years, and that's going to improve the, the skill and the art of coaching. Amazing. Patrick, your thoughts? I would definitely, uh, you know, I resonate with everything that's been said. What I would add is for us, I think it's about, um, health coaching can be something, can be a, the type of service that can be expensive, uh, not always reimbursed or provided through uh, private insurance. And so for us is, the question is, how do we move from this time term earner population on average to down the market to a, a larger population that may just have an Apple Watch today or even a Fitbit and could be interested in improving their health. And so, um, yeah, I think that's, that's where AI will, tremendously help. I think the, the, the accountability and the human touch will still be there, but for some individuals who might not be able to afford uh, something that's 100 or $150 a month, I think we'll definitely be able to provide something that's of value uh, and moving the needle for them uh, uh, at a much lower cost. Yeah, I mean, look, we as, as we kind of said somewhere in the middle that, um, you know, appreciate all of your time. And I think we're in a consensus that we're all going to need a person to lean on, right? And, and the technology and AI will help us all, um, you know, I'd say democratize to a certain extent, access to the health, health coaching and understanding our own bodies uh, and, and, and well-being. So thank you very much for joining. And for those who are sticking with us, um, actually later uh, in the day, we will have YCH or your coach labs. 
um, where Marina and I will take uh, you coaches through on some of the new and innovative uh, ways we're going to help you augment yourself and your practice. So thank you very much again. And uh, we will see you soon. Thank you.